Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to fix a heated blanket controller. This is the controller for a heated blanket. And as you can see over here, we've got the exposed wires which have now become a shock hazard. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a wipe down. You can use rubbing alcohol or just your household cleaning product. Right, unfortunately the damaged wire happens to be at the strain relief. This is the strain relief and it's there to stop this from actually happening. So unfortunately it's happened right at the end of the strain relief. So what I'm going to do is I've got to open up the controller. Right, just having a look inside there, you can see that that screw is not your usual star. So it requires a bit that looks like this. Right, if you have a look, this is your usual star with four sides, while this one here has three. Now many people do not have this particular bit, so I'll show you a workaround. You can use a flat screwdriver just to get in there. The flat screwdriver has to be more on the smaller side, just a little bit longer than one of those edges. And I can actually use this to unscrew that screw. Right, just having a look at that screw, you should use a bit that looks like that, but unfortunately most people don't have that, so you can just use a flat screwdriver if you have a look at how a flat screwdriver can work. Right, now when you open this, just be careful, if yours is spring-loaded, just be careful that these do not pop out. In this case, it's fine, I just opened it. So when you're opening this, just be aware that you might find that as it's open, spring, a spring might pop out. Just open it very carefully and almost cover it with your hand, just in case that you find these spring switches pop out. Right, so here is the problem side. There's the strain relief, there's the broken cable. So all I'm going to do is I'm now going to remove the strain relief like that. And I'm going to have to desolder it from the circuit board here. So I'm just removing it from here. And there you can see there was a fuse here, which is obviously blue. So I also have to change the fuse. Right, so here's my soldering iron. I've heated it up. And now I'm going to desolder the fuse and these two leads on the side. Right, so you might be able to reuse the strain relief. I don't think I can pull the cables through because the jacket, the insulation, is actually glued into the strain relief. So I'm just going to break this off now. Right, pull those out. And now I'll just see if I can. Now you see it's glued onto the jacket. As you can see, the jacket of the wire is actually glued inside there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly use a little drill bit and extend that hole. There's just a drill bit. And all I'm doing is I'm just trying to remove some of that insulation yeah there it's coming out now so you can see the old insulation there look see there it comes out now I'll be able to reuse the strain relief if in your case you can't reuse the strain relief I'll show you how to deal with that problem now say for example you couldn't reuse it and this was your wire you can see that that would normally go in there now at this point you can use heat shrink he has heat shrinks of different sizes and what you would do is you'll put the heat shrink over the wire like that and then you'll just heat it up and you can see as you heat it up it sucks down onto the wire and then you can put another heat shrink over it like that and then you can heat it up Now, as you can see, it's a little bit big there. So what I would do is now I'd use insulation tape and I would just do this. Right, now, as you can see, it is fatter there. And look at that. And as you can see, look at that. That now fits in there nicely. And all you need to do is put one more heat shrink over it. When you're using heat shrink, always start from the middle and work outwards. That way you don't get air bubbles locked inside. Right, so now you've effectively made your own strain relief. As you can see there, it offers some support there. Right, so there you can have a look there. You've made your own strain relief just using heat shrink and insulation tape. If you have a look at the back and you can see that that doesn't move. And if you have a look at the side, you can see there, even though it's clamping on the heat shrink, that's not a problem because remember it is totally insulated. That's actually a good thing that it's clamped on the heat shrink because that means this cannot pull. Right, so there you go. Right, now I'm going to go back to the original repair. Right, now in this case, I could reuse the original strain relief, so I'm going to. So all I need to do is glue it. As you can see, this strain relief is now loose, so I just need to put a bit of glue here. But before I do that, I just need to measure the lens, solder this on.
Right, now here I have a replacement fuse. Now, how did I know the size of the fuse? Well, on the original one that was there, it also says T1 amp, so I'm replacing it with the same size. Now we've got to solder the fuse onto the board here. Sometimes you find that the fuse doesn't like to get soldered directly on there, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to buff up the side of the fuse using some sandpaper. Right, now remember the way it was, the neutral was on the right hand side and the live was on the left hand side. It's not necessarily a rule that the blue is on the right, just make sure you follow the same wiring pattern that it was once you opened it. Now it's time to measure the length of the wire. As you can see there's plenty of wire there, so now I can put the glue. I'm just going to use super glue. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some super glue here. Then I'm going to push it in and pull it back out, push it more in and pull it back out. So now the super glue is inside there as well. You can pull it a little bit. Right. Right. Now this wire is already tight. The super glue is working. These contacts are a little bit dirty and I'm just going to use something called contact chemi. Now if you haven't got this, you can just use alcohol. And all I'm doing is I'm just spraying a little bit here and on the contacts over there. As you can see how it cleans away the oxides. Right, if your controller doesn't work even after you've done this, then you'll have to just do a little bit of fault tracing. The only electronic components here are uh, a few resistors and a thermal cutout and uh, these diodes. So if I test the diode, I can see that the diode seems like it's dead because I put it on continuity and it's almost a dead short, dead short, not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove those two diodes And just test it again while it's unplugged. Yes, that diode is destroyed. And I'll show it to you. What you're looking for is if you look at the resistance measurement, and if I measure the resistance of the diode, you can see that it's 0.2 ohms. And if I measure in the other orientation, you can see it's also 0.2 ohms. This means that the diode had the PN junction inside has destroyed itself and become a dead short. So what I need to do is replace this diode and probably that one too. So I'm going to replace them one by one so I don't make a mistake with the orientation. All right, so here we go. So if you're reading the diode, you'll see it says IN4007. And fortunately on this board, it actually shows you where the anode and cathode is. So I can now move to replace that one because I already know the orientation to which the diode goes back inside. Right, so this one here seems fine because when I check it with the multimeter, if I put the positive on this side, you can see it's open circuit, which is correct. And then if I do the diode test, you can see it's 0.5 0.5 volts to forward bias the diode and if I swap the leads to put the polarity in the other direction you can see my diode test says open circuit which is correct that's how a diode should respond when you measure it. Right and while we're here I'll just quickly test the resistors. All right now they look like they're in parallel as you can see and that is I think four 0.7 kilo ohms you read it via the colors on the resistor body and when I measure the resistance I'm getting 2.4 kilo ohms so yes that was quite close to 4.7 if you add them up because remember these are in parallel so it would have been halved and then there is what seems to be a thermal cutout here and I'll just check if it's still intact yes so that's still working Right now, quick test. Okay, it's on and if I switch it off, open circuit. And if I try the neutral, nope. And if I try this side now, nope. And if I switch it on, there we go. Perfect. Right now, I've plugged it in and I've switched it on, and I'll just measure. 124 volts and if I increase it 228 volts now in your country it might be different but as you can see it's got two different heat settings the first one is obviously for a lower heat therefore it's a lower voltage and the second one is for a higher heat and that's why the voltage goes up and if I switch it off there we go voltage drops down and if I switch it to number one here you can see 124 volts 
switch it to number two, 228. Right, so this controller is now working. Now the multimeter showed the voltage output on the number one selection and the number two selection. And I'd like to make it clear that this is not a low voltage heated blanket. If this was a low voltage heated blanket, the voltage would be below 48 volts, usually 24 volts or 12 volts, much safer. But this particular heated blanket is working on the supply voltage. And in my case, as you saw, was about 120 odd and then 220 odd for the number two setting. So in your country, if your supply voltage is about 110 volts, well, then then you'll probably be getting something like that. And if you put the selected uh, lower for a lower heat, you'll probably get lower voltage. And there is a little LED that does come on there. All right there, you can see the LED, it's on. And we'll switch it off, you can see the LED is off. All right, so thanks for watching, cheers.